Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Weld.com. We got a very, very special weld mitt we're doing today. Stainless steel, open root, without a purge. Yes, without a purge, TIG. Sounds crazy, but it's not. When we're done, it's gonna be a nice, shiny, clean weld, just like this. This is what we're doing, 3 8 plate, 308 filler, and 304 plate. No sugar green, no nothing. Don't mind that one, that was my practice plate. All right, that little cold wire feed. Don't worry about that. This is x-ray quality stuff. Let's get into it, guys, let's go. All right, I'm running off this Lightning MTS 275, one of my favorite machines. So I'm running a pre-flow 0.2. I mean, my start amps, I don't care about really. I mean, at 10. Post-flow, I care about a lot, I want 10 seconds. And my pre-flow, I really care about. I'm running, not 10 amps though, if you adjust this, it's about 110 amps. I'm running high freak pedal because I want to control my heat. And that's all the setup I like. I'm running about 20 CFH, 100% argon. I'm running DCEN. So if you guys jump over here, I'm gonna talk about the plate. So here's the fit up guys. Before I tacked this together, I took a uh, flap disc, put a 1 16th lane on the side. It's a 37 degree, 37 and a half degree bevel. Put about 1 16th lane on both plates. I use this as my spacer, 332nd stainless rod. I clipped, just clipped down and bent in a V. Just stuck it in here, then shoved them together and tacked one side, then pulled this out and tacked the other side. I mean, when you use this stuff, it has like a flux coating on the outside after you're done welding. So you want to chip that off, all right? Never chip it off when it's hot and orange. You want to chip it off, let it cool down where you can't see no orange. The keyhole wants to go real big. It wants to go erratic and get really big and blow out. And then I got to stop. So that land will help me control that keyhole to the size where I could weld with it and move up the joint. So I'm kind of getting a keyhole going here, pushing in the, dipping the wire in, pushing it in. All right, then I'm going to rest my cup. Then one dip, push push it up on the tungsten a little bit, dip, push up, dip, push up. Break, make sure my keyhole is on both sides of the bevel, both sides of the plate. Just go in here, all right. Dip, push it up a little bit, dip, push it up, dip, push it up, walk it a little bit up, just walk it up. Take your time. Walk it up. Walk it up. This reminds me of uh, if you're ever welded, if you lay down a MIG or a stick bead before and you take, got your TIG rig out and you uh, welded over it with your TIG and um, it gets all like weird like you know, I mean, there's flux on it. That's what this stuff reminds me of. So as long as you're breaking down that the bevels and you see a keyhole forming. All right. We're going to do a little stop and restart up here in the middle of the plate. Because I want to get a good idea of how, I'm, how this stuff runs and restarts. So I won't have no problem if I'm doing an x-ray or anything. I want to be nice and comfortable. All right. So, go a little bit more. I'm gonna come up. Come, I'm gonna come up way on the bevel and slowly let off. All right, guys. So we got our half of our root done. So you see right here, I came out and stopped on the side of the bevel. So I don't have a pen hole right here. If you do do that, you gotta get your grinder out and grind that. So you see how this got color? That's still good. It's running a little hot, but there's no sugaring. So you see this keyhole that tells me I'm still I'm breaking down the walls good. That's really good. You know you're getting penetration when you're seeing that keyhole right there. And it looks like I'm almost halfway on both sides of the plate. So it, see how this side's a little bit, uh, the keyhole's a little bit on this side? That tells me I'm riding my left side. I'm favoring my left side. So when I go restart back up, I want to try to keep focus more on both of these plates. Pay attention to hold, pay attention to it. So we basically just chip this off, get a wire brush or just tip, chip. Wire brush would be the easiest on a wire wheel. So we usually chip that off before we restart. Then we flip it over here, see how there's no sugar or nothing, guys. So as soon as we see how this is coming off, it's all nice and color. This is x-ray ready right now because I didn't dip my tungsten. I didn't get no cold wire feed. This is a good x-ray quality route. No undercut here on the sides. No excess reinforcement. It's all under eighth inch. We're ready to go and continue this route out, all right? So I'm gonna take a wire wheel. Just wire wheel this right here, flip it back over. And I'm gonna wire wheel this part right here, all right? 
And uh, so let's get to it. I'm gonna water wheel it and we're gonna light back up and burn more. All right, so I'm gonna strike an arc, start my arc about a quarter inch back from the top. All right, get a puddle form in here. I'm gonna walk on it very slowly. And I'm gonna sit there, right I'm at the edge of it, I'm gonna sit there and pause, let that puddle melt through all the way, make sure I'm breaking down the, um, the metal plate there real good. All right, then we're gonna resume our same action. All right, we're basically push it, uh, dab it in, push it up with the tungsten, and just dab it in, move a little bit up, we're pushing it in, move up a little bit, pushing it in, dab it in, move up, all right, that's all we're doing, all right. This is pretty cool stuff. And when these guys sent these this rod down, I mean, I was like, oh man, this is crazy. See, I'm making sure my keyhole's open. It's breaking down the walls, even though my plate looks like it's Looks like it's closed up, or it is basically closed up. I still got that keyhole there. It's telling me I'm breaking them walls down. Then the last quarter, half inch, oh, closed up there for a second. We'll see how that back looks like, but hey. All right, we're gonna come over off onto the bevel, the thick part, and slowly release our amps and break away. See how I'm not taking my cup away yet? I'm letting that argon cool all that down first. All right, guys, we're gonna go here and wire brush this or, ch or chip it off, but this is not really gray like you would, you, you would see normally when you're running 308 stainless or any type of stainless, like you stainless welders out there. So all this is is the flux protecting coating right here. So we'll see if we can wire brush this off. It's not chipping off, so I need to get a wire wheel on there. See how it just came right off? There's no sugar or nothing. That's a flux protecting the weld from the atmosphere. It's creating its own envelope with this flux. And if you notice right here, it's not burned like you would see a normal 3 16 or 308 stainless filler wire for TIG. It's silver still. That's kind of cool. I noticed the difference on that right away because I usually cut this off before I put this back into my, uh, or start a weld back up. So I thought that was pretty cool that this stays silver and non-contaminated or anything. All right. All right, since we got this slag, Cleaned off, I'll probably hit a little bit later right there. We're gonna flip this plate around, check the root out, and wire brush it, all right? All right, so we're gonna start down here at the bottom. So nice penetration, both walls, both uh, bevel of the plates broke down. I mean, I got a little flux right here. It's not no undercut, it just needs to be cleaned off more. Came up, you can see my restart right here. I could have sat a little bit longer and, and fed it in there, but still, there's no uh, inclusion in there or nothing. So we continued up, uh, got a little bit unsteady right here with my amperage but still passable still good just keep coming up and this is where you guys probably seen the camera it closed up and I was like oh crap I should stop but I just kept going through it and actually I broke it all down like it's I'm surprised so that still would be a good weld so I came up to the top stopped and uh, basically that's it so we're ready for our next pass so I'm gonna weld with this rod still because I'm thinking that uh, if you do a, uh, if you leave your purge in there when you're doing your uh, hot pass, because in case you blow through, you gotta have that purge in there to, uh, to protect that backside of that root. So I'm gonna do the same concept, is just take that, but use this rod still. All right, so start on the bottom, strike an arc, start my arc, come up here, and we'll set the rod in here. I'm kind of gonna freehand this right here. Freehand means I'm not gonna set the cup on the bevel until I have room to set my cup on the bevel, because right now I don't. All right, I'm just going to move, move back and forth, wash over on both sides of the plate to make sure I'm washing over good with the puddle. All right, so so I'm just kind of since I got it set on there now, I'm we'll kind of rearrange myself, get a little bit more comfortable. I turned the machine up to 120 amps. So I'm going to kind of give it more power here. You see my puddle get bigger, then I'm just kind of going to walk her up. All right. All right, I'm pausing, do a light, slight hesitation, let that uh, puddle wash into that bevel and melt in that bevel really good. All right, right on my toes. All right. Just letting it do, just doing, it, doing the natural thing like walking a cup, same old technique and everything, all right. Going back and forth. All right, I'm using 330 seconds here. Um, filler, eighth inch, E3 tungsten, the purple. I'm just walking back and forth. 
I'm not even using 420 amps. I'm using probably like, I don't know, 80, 100. That's about it. All right, so I'm not gonna run this whole pass all the way up, probably like three quarters. All right, so I'm gonna come up on the bevel, pull off. I'm gonna pause there, let that, let my gas just keep cooling and that plate off and keeping the atmosphere away from it. You hear my gas go out, so I usually pull away. That's good, I'm ready. I noticed with this stuff, it's like 308 stick rod, it's popping, so that's gonna hurt you when, you land, when it lands on your lip or cheek or your eyeball. So definitely always have your glasses on. All right, so we got done with our hot pass. So I uh, stopped up three quarters of the way up just to show you guys um, the first route and the second pass. So we got a good color here. We tied into our bevel good. I don't see lack of fusion or anything on the route. If anyone's out there welding with this right now, drop some tips below in the comments below. I'm Man Cub here. Check us out on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Follow us on all of them. Subscribe to YouTube. So. I'm out learning is key guys, always practice and learn.